Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to basically talk about my old English story because I know folks are wondering how in the heck I started studying old English. My introduction to linguistics was actually through old English. When I was in the eighth grade, we had a National History Fair Day competition at school. So I think it was, yeah, it was, it was yeah, eighth grade, still middle school. And basically every year we had this history fair uh, competition. And I just so happened that summer to have been flipping through all the books on our shelves and I ended up flipping through our encyclopedias. This was back in the days before Google and I saw English and I saw all of these very strange uh, symbols. I think I saw a thorn and I saw an ed and I saw the little strange ah sound and a number of other things and I was like what weirdness is this that they have under the title English. Again it was no schulen her heien. I often a richest word. Me ochte das michti antis modia thunk. That's just a little bit of Cadman's hymn, one of the first poems I believe in in old English. At least one of the earliest. But at any rate I became fascinated with this language that looked so strange. It looked like almost like Icelandic except the book was telling me it was English. <laughs> And so from there, I decided to do my history fair project on the history of the English language. I looked at how language changed from the time of the Anglo-Saxons down through uh, the Middle English period, and then ultimately looking at you know modern, early modern English with Shakespeare, and then modern, late modern English, which is what we speak today. And uh, you know, I absolutely found that process uh, fascinating. Actually, so I went to Rice University, and I was able to because uh, I was working on a mini documentary for. Uh, that project. We went, I'm trying to tell y'all, we went all out for these projects when I was in middle school. Like science fair, history fair, we did it all. At any rate, so uh, I went to Rice University and well actually I called around to a number of universities in Houston. Basically no one picked up except an awesome linguist who was working at Rice at the time. She's actually one of my good friends and uh, um, kind of a, an unofficial mentor of mine really. And she just loved talking with me and uh, teaching me all the ins and outs of uh, what the grammar was like and what Old English was like in the history of the language. And uh, she also just so happened to be working on languages in the Pacific. That was my first exposure to language documentation and conservation, particularly of languages of the Asia Pacific area. And so that was also a really sort of cool plus there. But essentially after that, I had been hooked on Old English. And so when I got to college, I basically waited until so the our dean was a scholar in Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Saxon studies and Tolkien studies and I basically just stood around waiting until he <laughs> and decided to be the first person to sign up for that class because I think he taught the class only every like two to three years and so I was like I'm gonna take this class and so essentially I took an old English class and got a chance to really enjoy digging through the language learning the language uh, and learning about the culture from that perspective reading the literature reading uh Beowulf in the original, doing translation, and uh, ever since then I've always tried to get in uh, some Old English. And it's been over the years, there's been years I haven't done anything, there's been some years I've been able to do more, and for the past I'd say maybe three years I've been trying to sort of get in at least some practice with it to sort of bring it up to, I'd like to, my goal for my reading languages is that I'm kind of in the stage of translating because with a lot of reading languages you don't actually learn them in the same way uh, as you learn modern languages and so like from that standpoint your reading fluency in that language is not as high you're you end up reading those languages in a, in a way that is like working through a, 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 a jigsaw puzzle almost. You know, you're piecing it together. So even when I read Latin, you know, I can't just sort of read out the sentence as a, it, you know, as sort of a, a Latin teacher, if it's a sort of a simple sentence or something from a book or something I'm working with, uh, uh, with the kids, uh, particularly text that I'm familiar with, I'm able to do that. But when it comes to interacting with like brand new complicated texts in Latin, that reading fluency that I say have in French or even have in Indonesian or some of the other languages is just not there because you, you just don't learn uh, that with a lot of the uh, ancient a lot of the ancient languages and so my goal is to ultimately be able to sit down and read fluent old English without having to look up things or without having to even when I don't have to look up things I feel like I'm stopping here and there and then I'm like translating and I'm figuring out the grammar and then I'm putting it all together and I produce a sentence which is a nice translation and so it's a lot of little steps 
uh, that you go through. I've talked to a number of different scholars about this in terms of Old English and Latin, and it turns out that this is pretty much the norm. You know, one of my old Latin teachers told me that although he'd been studying Latin since he was in grade school, he really didn't learn to fluently read Latin until he was well into his PhD program. In, in in Latin and so basically for years and years and years on end he ended up having just read but he was reading and he was obviously really good at Latin he knew what he was doing but he was reading in a more translation way so filtering uh, from Latin filtering through English and then ultimately sort of out pops the meaning instead of going straight from Latin to meaning right and then if you need to you know be able to sort of translate out loud from the meaning to English so uh, that's kind of my goal for old English is to be able to have that sort of old English to meaning connection to be able to say sit down and read Beowulf and to watch the movie of the story play in my head without translating sentence by sentence as I go along. All right, guys, so that's my old English story. Let me know what you think, what ancient languages you're working on. How do you learn ancient languages? Actually, I'm going to post something below in the uh, in the comments area uh, that basically gets at uh, new approaches to teaching ancient languages, particularly Latin, where folks are learning it like a modern language and learning how to read it very fluently, very a lot faster. Still takes a really long time. Generally, a, a lot of uh, the recommendations for a lot of folks is about two years of intensive study doing certain particular very unique things not just working through books but unique things to be able to re like maintain or, or, or excuse me attain that uh, fluent reading and in some cases folks that go to immersion schools fluent speaking of uh, latin but i'll post that down below guys let me know what you guys think about uh, these reading languages about these ancient languages all right guys go take down some tongues